let's go on to the next one the blood testes barrier the blood testes barrier is formed by which of the following now uh, please remember there is a very important blood testes barrier and this blood testes barrier does not allow substances from the blood to affect the developing sperms in testes and what is the blood testes barrier this is formed by the sertoli cells and tight junctions between the adjacent sertoli cells are responsible for what is known as the blood testes barrier and um, uh, what are these tight junctions so let's have a look all right let's have a look now as far as the tight junctions are concerned now this is of course a, a diagram of intestinal epithelial cells and even in the intestinal epithelial cells you'll find these tight junctions where are these tight junctions tight junctions are towards the lumen this is a tight junction which is towards the lumen towards the luminal membrane what is the advantage of having these tight junctions these tight junctions will not allow substances to pass between the cells have you understood so this is what is known as tight junctions right and so tight junctions are not only found between the sertoli cells like i just told you in the previous slide but you also have these tight junctions between the intestinal epithelial cells and that too towards the luminal side now these tight junctions are made of proteins which are called occludins claudins and jams full form of jams is junctional adhesion molecules right so these are your tight junctions and just to take this topic further what do you find towards the middle are two which are called adherence junctions and desmosomes and what is attaching the cell to the basement membrane are what are known as hemidesmosomes now the tight junctions form zona or zonula occludens naam se pata chal raha hai occlud kar raha hai right so it's called zona occludens and adherence junctions and desmosomes form zonula adherents ठीक है अगेन नाम से पता चल रहा है फंक्शन क्या होगा जोनुला अध्यरेंस मतलब सेल्स को जॉइन कर रहा है राइट अध्यर कर रहा है जोनुला अक्लूडेंस क्या है इट इज नॉट अलाउिंग सब्सटेंसेस टू पास बिटवीन द सेल्स एंड द प्रोटीन्स व्हिच आर रिस्पांसिबल फॉर दीस टाइट जंक्शंस आर ऑक्लूडेंस क्लोडेंस एंड जैम्स राइट सो दिस इज अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ जंक्शंस बिटवीन द सेल्स Let's look at the next one. Now, this says when ORS is given to a patient, glucose is absorbed by which of the following transport processes? Now, uh, there is uh, when you look at the transport across cell membrane, two major types of transport across the cell membrane. एक है passive transport, दूसरा है active transport. And what is passive transport? Passive transport is downhill transport. It is along an electrochemical gradient. Or active transport क्या है? बिल्कुल opposite. अपहिल ट्रांसपोर्ट है अगेंस्ट एन इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल ग्रेडियंट है और जो मेजर डिफरेंस है बिटवीन पैसिव एंड एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट इज दैट पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट डज नॉट रिक्वायर एनर्जी बट एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट नीड्स एनर्जी आप डाउन हिल जा रहे हैं पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट में एनर्जी की जरूरत नहीं है जब आप अप हिल जा रहे हैं एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट में तो एनर्जी की जरूरत है सो लेट एस सी वॉट आर दीज नाउ सिंपल डिफ्यूजन ऑसमोसिस फेसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन दीज आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ passive transport now when ors is given to a patient so how is glucose going to be absorbed glucose is absorbed by what is known as sglt sodium glucose linked transport which is an example of secondary active co transport right secondary active co-transport so the answer to this question is secondary active co-transport right secondary active co-transport absolutely right varun this is your secondary active co-transport now um see this over here absorption of glucose in the intestinal epithelial cells towards the luminal side you have the sodium glucose co-transport which is an example of secondary active co-transport right and this is with the help of sglt1 
sodium glucose linked transport one but on the basal side there is a GLUT there is a GLUT2 and GLUT2 is an example of facilitated diffusion right facilitated diffusion what is SGLT this is an example of secondary active co-transport now the question is glucose absorption which I have asked you the question is facilitated diffusion and secondary active co-transport and for glucose absorption are both involved on the luminal side of secondary active co-transport and on the basal side of facilitated diffusion so I have given the answer to secondary active co-transport why did I give the reason is you can see that secondary active co-transport is on the luminal side GLUT जो example है facilitated diffusion का that is on the basal side. So secondary active so when glucose has to be absorbed, glucose first has to be absorbed from the lumen to the cell, and that is with the help of secondary active co-transport. Once it reaches inside the cell, it will enter the plasma with the help of GLUT. So my better answer for that question is SGLT or secondary active co-transport. Excellent. Everybody, Varun, you've got it right. Okay. Now the next is insulin-dependent GLUT4. आपको पता ही है कि अलग-अलग तरह के GLUT होते हैं, लेकिन जो insulin-dependent GLUT है, that is GLUT4, right? और ये GLUT4 कहाँ-कहाँ पर है? This is present on adipocytes and on and on muscle cells, skeletal muscle cells, cardiac muscle cells. What is it an example of? This is an example of facilitated diffusion. Or the facilitated diffusion is passive. It requires, it does not require energy. But facilitated diffusion or simple diffusion may farak kya hai? Dono passive hai. But farak kya hai? Facilitated diffusion may there is a carrier protein which is going to be involved. Right? There is a carrier protein which is involved. But again, this is passive, does not need energy. Now, facilitated diffusion, as I said, there is a carrier protein involved. And this diagram was given to you and you were asked to ask, what is this an example of? Now, please remember, when a carrier protein is involved, in facilitated diffusion, the substance to be transported first binds with the carrier protein. Then, the carrier protein will be a conformational change and the substance will be transported into the cell. So this is what, uh, this is a carrier mediated transport, okay? It's a carrier mediated transport, okay? Um, okay, so Meet Patel, like, very interesting sa question is that absorption means into the systemic circulation, then why don't we consider GLUT as the answer? Peter, dhyan dije ka, absorption from the GI tract, aapne ORS diya hai. Oral rehydration solution diya hai. To yaha par absorption means from the GI tract, from the lumen of the GI tract into the cells. Pehle cells mein aayega, phir to glucose blood mein jayega. Directly to blood mein jayega nahi? Isn't it? So once it is not going directly into the blood, we should, the better answer is going to be secondary active co-transport. See, that is the reason why in ORS, I need to give sodium and glucose together. Isn't it? Both sodium and glucose are, comp are in the ORS. Anna? Because we need both for the absorption of sodium. We need both of them together for absorption of both sodium and glucose. Isn't it? All right. Okay. So this is a carrier mediated transport. Or jabbi koi carrier involved hota hai, there is always a maximum rate of transport, jise kehte hai, transport maxima, maximum rate of transport. A carrier mediated transport such as facilitated diffusion will show you a transport maxima. And why transport maxima? Uh, why is there maximum rate of transport? Because the carrier protein hai, it tends to get saturated. So there is going to be a maximum rate of transport. Okay? And that is known as transport maxima. And please remember, kaha par aapko ma transport maxima milega? Kis tarhe ki transport mein aapko transport maxima milega? This will be seen in facilitated diffusion, not in simple diffusion. Have you understood? Simple diffusion mein jo transport hai, it is directly proportional to the concentration gradient. It is directly proportional to the concentration gradient. Right, 
So, um, sorry, this is um, okay. So, um, the next important point here is okay. Let's see this. Now, this is a very, very important chart because they are, uh, th uh, this is a very important chart. And this is what are the types of GLUT and where do you find them? Okay? Now, please remember GLUT4, I've already told you, is the only one which is insulin dependent. All the others are insulin independent. Or ye mujhe kaha milega? Ye mujhe milega adipocytes pe or muscle cells mein. Okay? Jo insulin dependent transport hai, uptake hai glucose ka, that occurs in adipocytes and in the muscle cells. Now, the next important point is GLUT5 kya hai? Now, GLUT5 is a specific fructose transporter. Yaad rakhe F of 5 and fructose transporter. This will be obviously in the small intestine. Jejunum mein, jahan par fructose ki absorption hogi. And so that is GLUT5. Ab aate hain GLUT1, GLUT2, GLUT3. Ye thoda sa confusion kai baar create karte hain. So, let's try and understand where or try and remember where is GLUT. Now, GLUT1. GLUT1 is in the brain, one brain, so GLUT1 is in the brain, it is in the placenta, one placenta, it is also in the RBCs, right, and in the kidneys, but kidneys may majorly, which um, abundant hai, that is GLUT2, two. two kidneys, so GLUT2 is more abundant than GLUT1 in the kidneys. Do intestine hoti hai? small and large intestine, so here is GLUT2, okay? But liver is one and then there is GLUT2, our pancreas and liver, these are two important organs of the uh, GI tract, so liver and pancreas, here is GLUT2, okay? So try and remember this, GLUT1 will be in the brain, in the placenta, GLUT1, one brain, one placenta, but also on RBCs, right? GLUT2 will be in the kidneys, two kidneys, two intestines, so it's also in the intestines. Liver and pancreas, two important organs, uh, so these are uh, where you will find GLUT2. GLUT3, ki bahut widespread distribution hai, brain mein hai, kidneys mein hai, placenta mein hai. Or GLUT4, just mein aapko bataya, insulin dependent GLUT hai, which is present in the adipocytes and in the skeletal muscles. Or GLUT5, a fructose, specific fructose transporter hai.